fabulous brother educators. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Where were you on the night of July 31st, 19th? No. <laughs> well, I can't guarantee there will be all of us together, right? But maybe. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I just had to give a little recap of our New Year's party, which was so much fun. That was only just a little itsy bitsy bit. <laughs> so if you've never been here before, say hi. I am a Brother Brand Ambassador, and today we have the fab fabulous, fabulous Heather Banks, and wait till you see what she's got going for you. But before we do that, if you've never been here before, we are live. Assuming all the technology is working today, I'm seeing, yes, we are. Our Nell's on, I'm, we are live on Brother Facebook and YouTube page. So did you catch yesterday's video? I showed how to make a mesh laundry bag. And uh, the feedback has been amazing about how many of you guys are going to do that. And I just have to share in a clean way. I, I, I went home and my husband said, so how was your show today? And I said, great. And he said, what did you make? And I said, a mesh laundry bag. And he goes, don't tell me you explained to your entire audience about our laundry debut when we first got married. And I said, no, actually I didn't. But for those of you that remember the story, <laughs> I will just say that we just got married and I used to sew at night for my customers and it's like midnight, the house is supposed to be quiet and all I hear is thump, thump, thump. And I go downstairs in the dryer is all of my fine lingerie and a pair of his boat shoes. Yes, I'm not kidding you. His boat shoes. <laughs> he washed them together and dried them together. So by the way, when I pulled my laundry out after boat shoes in the dryer for hours, it was like this big. <laughs> and um, I'll just end the story there. So I'm going to bring Heather up. <laughs> so Heather, tell me that you didn't have. <laughs> that is the best story. <laughs> Your fine lingerie and boat shoes. Sure. Boat shoes. And I was, I said, what were you thinking? And he said, well, they're both clean. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So he wanted to know if the mesh bag was for his shoes so he could do that again. Uh, actually, he'll never do that again. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure he won't. I can't even imagine. I love that not only did he do the washing machine, he did the dryer. So oh, yeah. extra, dryer. you know, extra yeah. there. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, that, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, so we're also in mesh bags. So today, though, you have something very special, which is also, well, actually, has nothing to do with mesh bags or shoes. <laughs> we're all about couching today. Yarn. Mm -hmm. I love it. We are. We're talking yarn today and couching. And, you know, I've been looking at following some people on Facebook, and I do want to say hello to everyone today. Thank you. I see you signing in. It's so good to see all of you again. But I have been looking on Facebook and following what everybody's doing in this really cold weather. And I've noticed a lot of people saying, you know, I have a lot of yarn. You know, I crocheted, I knitted, I did all those, I do those fun things in addition to sewing. And um, I've seen some really creative things people have done with yarn. And I thought, oh, that's a great, let's talk about some of the different things you can do pull that yarn out of the storage and put it onto your machine. And uh, we're going to, we're going to go all the way from using a basic brother machine. You know, maybe you don't have a luminaire or a dream machine and you still want a couch. So I want to talk about how you can do that with those machines up to some of the more fancy. Uh, and speaking of that, let me back up, Angela. I'm going to tilt my camera down. So you oh, can I gotta see, see this. my shirt, my jacket that I have here. And let me turn around so you can see the oh, back. My Gosh, I love it. Oh, that's oh, so no. cute, Heather. So it's all couched on. And now this case, these were built in designs from the Luminaire. So we can do embroidery couching on the Luminaire. But I thought I saw this kimono style, you know, simple jacket. And I thought, oh, this has like a place for me to put all of these built in designs. So I love I that. to show you. The color is amazing. I love the white and the blue. And so all of that couching. So for those of you that don't know what couching is, that's yarn. So all of the, that blue designs there is yarn. Yes. All of this is yarn. Let me, let, oh, I have my ball of yarn right here to show you. So I had an entire, um, well, I've walked away without it, but this is just, I mean, it was just my basic yarn and, um, I had this beautiful blue and I know you can't really tell in the, um, in the photo, but it has a little bit of glitter sparkles in it. And I chose a couple different designs that were built into the embroidery side of the Luminaire. And I said, I'm going to just 
go crazy with this. And I have to say, Angela, you inspired this because I have watched you do a, a different kinds of embellishment on your clothing before you start sewing them together. So I, I, I followed your design where I took the pattern piece and I traced the pattern piece onto the fabric. I did the embellishment before I put it together and then I sewed it. So I got that from you and I really oh, appreciate I love it. That. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're so good at your clothing and you, what you do. So <laughs> thank well, you. Well, thanks Heather. Well, what I, we can't see the sparkles on that yarn is exactly, but all I can say is it matches perfect. And I would have sworn that you just walked out of a designer boutique with that. Love it. So kind. Thank you. It's fun. I hope it inspires people. Arnell, Thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. So I, there's Joyce. Thank you. Okay. We need to talk. What is couching? Uh, so yes, we're using yarn. You can use other items. You can use ribbon and you can do use lots of different thicknesses. So let me just switch camera views and then I can show people what couching is up close. So give Perfect. me one second. I'll flip you over to the front of my sewing machine. While and she's switching, I love that jacket. I love it. I think, here we go. Let's bring yeah. you back up here. Okay, perfect. So let me show you. Actually, I'm going to just move this over so I can see what I'm doing as I show you. All right. So what you see in front of you is just some basic feet. So if you are starting out, and let me, let me pull this up. So look how fancy this particular yarn is. I love this. It was actually mm. made out of recycled clothing so i just love it are you serious yes right i mean it's gorgeous and you can see here that i put it onto uh, my fabric so here you can see that i've put it here so couching couching is taking thick threads or especially yarns things you couldn't normally thread through your machine through the uh the needle the eye of the needle and being able to stitch them down onto fabric usually but of course you can do a lot of different things with that so i have just tons and tons of things like here this is almost like a ribbon and um you can see how different thicknesses all of these are and of course my recycled fabric yarn that's really thick never would have been able to get that through the eye of a needle so i wanted to show you what you can do with that and how this works if you, so again, if you have, you know, stacks of yarn in your closet and you're not sure what to do with it, I highly encourage you to bring it out because we're going to show you some stuff you can do with it. Okay. To start with, if you have a brother machine, then it came with a J foot. So it looks like this and it doesn't matter if it's a high shank or a low shank machine. It's just your basic sewing foot and you probably do your regular sewing with it. Additionally, well, before we go into that, I'm going to show you how this works. So what I have done to stitch this down is I have used a couple different threads. I need to thread something through the needle. In this case, I used a clear or poly, monopoly thread. So you, you only see the thread. Uh, other cases, I have used a actual variegated thread, something that looks like this. So we're going to start with showing you how to do this with just your J foot. So I'm going to go ahead and put this onto my machine and I'm gonna come in here so I know you can see a little bit easier. And I'm gonna try to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible. I might change my camera angle. I love this, Heather, because you mentioned this could be done on any machine then, any of the brother machines, because yes. you're using just a J foot. So those of you that always pop in and say, I, oh my gosh, I'm drooling over the luminaire. You can still drool over the luminaire, but you'll be able to do this with your machine, whatever you have, which is awesome. Absolutely. And I wanted to make sure that we included that because their brother has so many fabulous machines and this is the basic foot. You know, this is just the one that comes with our brother machines. This one that has the J on it. It is in there. I'm not sure how easy to see that is, but you I want it. you good. Great. So let me put it back on and we will show you how I'm going to do this. So this foot doesn't have any special channels, you know, underneath we have piping feet, we have all kinds of special things, but I actually was able to do, and I'm gonna show you my really thick fabric because why not, right? Show you how, or excuse me, my really thick yarn, how this can work. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. Now, brother recommends 
a couple stitches for couching. You can use any decorative stitch really. And if you're using a clear or white thread like I have here, then you're probably not gonna really see the stitch too much. But they do recommend, I'm just going to lay my thread or my yarn, I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see that. I'm just gonna lay my yarn down. And then I'm going to take you over really quick to the front of my machine because uh, I want you to see the stitch. Oh, we just lost Heather. <laughs> Heather, come back. She might have tripped over her cord. Are you back? Yay, you're back. I, I said, Sorry, did you over I your cord? Yeah, I did. Ah. <laughs> oh, so I got it. Sorry. All right, I'm back. You good? Yes. All right, let me go to this can. Oh, we lost her again. Don't make me have to do this. I'll have to pull out my whole basket of yarn. <laughs> I agree, Mary. She's coming back. Okay, right, so back. that's really odd. And we're gonna we're going to adjust super quick. No biggie. I'm just gonna move my other camera over so that you can see. I'm gonna move my table. Actually, give give me one sec, Angela, and I'll okay. move my other table. All right, so while she's moving, I can see what's going on down there. And I also, by the way, Heather, if you can hear me, I have my machine set up for you. Oh, I've been work, working on my dresses today, by the way. I have my machine all set up with a little bit of couching here too. So if you need me to show my screen, you just let me know. And uh, it looks like she... Okay. You're back? Yes. Wonderful. All right, so there's a little bit of a glare. So um, how, about, how well can you see the screen? We can see it pretty good. Yeah, we just see like a little bit of glare on the left, but we can see it. All right, well, that is no problem. I can get rid of that here in a sec. So basically what I've done is go to my sewing screen and uh, everyone will have a different version of this. You know, obviously I have a large one that you can see, but you're gonna have a slightly different one. Now, what I'm gonna do is just choose a decorative stitch. I'm not actually going to choose anything fancy, but Brother actually recommends one particular stitch and it looks like this. It's in my luminaire, it is Q21. So um, if you have Q21, then you can of course choose this. But uh, if you don't, you can use any, shoot. Give me one sec, Angela, because I want Are you, to on, did you say Q21? Yes, Q, so okay. in the quilting side, we have something called uh, quilting stitches in the luminaire. I'm just gonna bring up mine that doesn't have a glare just so you guys can see it yes. while she's getting her screen ready. Now again, this is on the luminaire, but you have to look on your machine too. This right. just happens to be no, the one I'm, I'm using. Definitely seen this stitch before. And you can use something like it, but it has a really nice back and forth left and right. So yeah, go over to the queue. There you go. Put my glasses on, huh? 21. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now 21. Yes, that's it. Can you guys see that one really close? I'm gonna bring you in super close so you cannot miss it. There'll be no questions here. There it is, that's it. I love that stitch. Notice how it goes right, left, right, left with a really light, airy stitch. Yeah. Though, so, so, and it's also very wide, Angela. So, if you look down at the bottom of your screen, you can see that right off the bat, the width is a five millimeter. So, it's going to choose a really nice back and forth that goes really wide. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right here. Yeah, five. yeah. So, that's, that's five awesome. millimeter, really awesome. The way it goes, um, it's already built in. And that was one of the things I was going to say is when you're doing the couching, you want your stitch to be pretty wide. So, if it doesn't start out really wide, How's this for glare? Is it better? Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so you can see what we chose. Now, I want to go ahead. Actually, I should have just done that really quick. We're just going to go right back to uh, the other camera that lets you see where we're stitching. So you've seen us choose the stitch. 
We have all kinds of cameras all over the place. <laughs> You're like mine. <laughs> you like to see my jar with the thread in it. That I was wondering if that was candy or <laughs> <laughs> it was thread. Okay, so here we are back at our our thing, our uh, yarn. So what I've done is I've just laid this yarn out. Now, one of the reasons that I really wanted to show you this yarn is it's so thick, it can be hard to get through a normal thread guide, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I love that you can do any size of yarn. I have threaded this with a 100 weight white thread. So it's going to be very, it's going to blend in a lot. All I'm gonna do, so they, oh, go ahead. Just, I'm just going to make that clear because she said a hundred weight thread. And I had a ton of questions. Are you using the same thread in the bobbin, by the way? I'm using a 60 weight. So I'm just using like a sort of a normal lightweight embroidery uh, bobbin thread. Okay, there you go. Wonderful. Yeah, that's this is that's a great question. And also, because if this might came up come up later, this is a 7511 needle. So I just kept in my embroidery needle and I didn't need it to be any thicker or stronger to be able to do this. That might come up a little bit too. So I'm gonna back up so you can watch me. You can do this on any machine that has a basic zigzag stitch. Thank you, Barbara. Excellent point. 100%. Yeah. That Q21 is kind of a fun recommended stitch, but let's keep going. All right. Let's just go. And like I said, this foot does not have any channels or anything special, but you can notice how really smoothly it's stitching over this oh my yarn. Gosh. And I'm just going to finish that. this up so you can see it. All right, let me tie it off and show you what it looks like. Now, as was, we just mentioned, you could use any stitch, but look how pretty that is. And I don't know if you can see even the stitches. I'm trying to get that into the light better. We can but kind of, you know, we can though. And you know what's interesting is where you stitch, it kind of matted it down a little bit, but left it fuzzy. I mean, it, it looks beautiful. It doesn't even look like the same piece of yarn you started with. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, right? And you can do this with any, and, and thank you so much for pointing it out. Really, what I was going to say next was any decorative stitch that you want from a zigzag, play with yours. I have been trying all kinds of stitches from, you know, any of those decorative ones that we're not really sure what to do with. And let me bring this back up so that you can see that uh, I was using all different, uh, poly mono is great. Monopoly is great because you can't see the thread at all. So if you really, really want your yarn to stand out, try a poly mon a monopoly, I keep going backwards, so that you can just see your yarn. But if you want to incorporate also, and let me throw something under here and show you, if you also want to incorporate color, here are some Ooh. that I did where I used a variegated thread with a white uh, yarn in the background. So this case, I wanted to see the thread. Other cases, you don't. You want them to blend in. So if you have a just a basic brother machine with a J-foot, you can get some really nice, uh, these J-foot feet work great for going over thicknesses and different heights, as you can see, because this was some really thick yarn. So perfect start for us because I wanted everyone to know that if you have a basic brother machine, you can do this too. You can couch and uh, let's, let's keep going so you can see what else you can do. So Heather, I am so excited that you talked about that because now with some of the machines where we can do the embroidery with them and with the couching with a special foot, I have a whole bin of yarn that won't fit through that needle that you're talking about through the <laughs> to use. So now I have to, and I'll take you out while you're switching uh, okay. cameras real quick. Um, I never even thought about using the J foot. It's like not, I'm not saying that's going back to the old school. It was just like, I forgot that you could just do it with something so simple, which is I, fantastic. This is a great I think, refresher. I think you're right about that, Angela, that uh, we do forget. And I'm, I'm going to bring this over so you can see what else I'm doing. I think sometimes we have so many fancy, great tools, which by the way, I'm a huge fan of. I love to use all our fancy tools, but we forget that you can just do it with the, some of the basic things we have. All yeah, right. I love that. You're right, Sharon. Endless possibilities. Okay. <laughs> switching you over and I'm showing you my box here because I want to show you a different foot that we have. Now yes. this foot is a separate accessory. You can see in this little box here. If you have a dream machine or a dream weaver, 6200, a dream creator, a 5100, a 3000, you know, this is just a sewing only 
um, sorry, yes, sewing only foot. I was have to go back to which foot I have out right now. So with this one, you can, this is free motion. Sorry, I'm, I'm having to get my, my bearing here. So this is a free motion foot. So if you want to stitch, and let me give you an example of something that's free motion. So here, here's some yarn that I have free motion quilted. So if you want to get crazy and you want to create your own designs, you don't want to be restricted to the sewing machine, then let's talk about what you can do with that, this. So this particular foot will go on, let me get you in the right area. It slides on as you would expect. Now the screw has to actually come out for this one. So a lot of times with our feet, we can just slide it straight, slide it on without taking the foot out. And I'm going to slide that I up. agree, Lauren. Lauren says, you're making this look so easy. And you know, this foot, by the way, somebody was just mentioning uh, for the Dream Machine and the Quattro too. Yes, actually, I remember on my Quattro, I had a foot similar to this that, I don't know if it's the exact same one, but it worked on there and it worked great. And the free motion was so easy. But again, you couldn't do super thick. Correct. And you definitely can here. So now with this, one of the things I really like about this is that the feed dogs will automatically lower when you choose the stitch we're going to talk about now. So this has a piece that goes into the back and it's a thread guide and it plugs into the back of the machine. So it goes with the uh, different um, the different machines we just mentioned, the V-series feet so or machines. All right, so you can see that that's on. So this came with a thread guide and it also came with some pretty cool tools. Now. You may know that I have to get my thread through this hole right here. <laughs> so do you see that little hole right there? We have to get our thread through that. So it comes with a metal threader that looks like this. Now, I have to tell you, Angela, I tend to lose them. So I buy them by the bucket. Um, <laughs> in other places where you can buy dental tools and that's all this is, is a dental tool and it only show you how it works. So you have this long plastic thing. I'm going to put my, oh, you can't see. I'm gonna bring my thread through one side and now it's, it's looped. Oh, let me get my, I'm just gonna do it from this side. So I can see, I can see the wolf pack is laughing because it's the first thing I always lose. It's a little metal piece that comes with that. It's the same thing I did is went and bought a whole bunch of dental floss stuff. <laughs> I know it's just, I just lose them and it's, you, you take them places, you can't find them. So once I have that looped through, I'm just going to push it through the, hole, the center hole and then pull it back the other side. And now I can fit, now I'm threaded. I don't have to spend any time close up and I don't have to get my glasses out. It's threaded through. The second thing, now Angela, do you want to show the front of your machine again? Sure. Okay, and I'll tell you where to go. All right, hold on one sec. I got, I just have to remember what camera it is. Here we go, here's <laughs> the front of my machine. All right, you perfect. Find the machine if you can see it. All right. Okay, so you're still gonna be in the sewing side. Now for the Luminaire, the foot that allows us to free motion couch is actually under the S category. But oh. that's not true for everyone. Um, other machines, it's under special stitch category. But for the Luminaire, since that's what you're looking for, it's under S. Perfect. Right and you're looking for this one. And it's so easy to find because it says a C next to it. So S01 is the couching, free motion couching. Perfect. Now, notice that funky X foot on the left. That's the one I just put on, the one that's at the top of the screen. Exactly. That was the one that I just threaded with the dental floss threader. And if you look to the right, Angela, and you push the drop down menu um, to the top right where the little uh, above the S. Yep. Okay. Do you see that free motion is now on automatically? So the one that looks like the little phone with the tag, the tail coming out of it, that drops your feed dogs. So normally if I want to free motion quilt, I have to push that button. Yeah. But because we push the couching 
button, it knew because, oh, okay, you're gonna couch, you're free motion couching, automatically I'm gonna drop the feed dogs. So when you push the, the stitch that has the C next to it, your feed dogs will automatically drop and your presser foot will adjust to the proper height. And you don't have to know that, it just does it automatically. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to put a piece of fabric underneath. I'm going to lower my presser foot. Now, the trick is the machine automatically slows down for you. And since the feed dogs are lowered, I can just, sorry, I didn't push my correct button because I was letting you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me now push the couching button. Oh, stop, hold on. I was just staring at your screen the entire time and um, I didn't press my button, so I gave it a regular stitch. So I'm going to have to I'm, cut it loose. Hold on. Yeah, give me <laughs> one sec. I'll cut it out. At least you didn't have like a super hot mess like I would have. have. It, it only happens when we're live, and plus you're trying oh. to help me. I could be over here couching away. 100%, right? I just <laughs> started it to stitch, and now I need to actually cut my thread out. So, sorry everyone, I totally wasn't. You know what the good news is, Heather? The good news is that was not in the middle of your outfit and it was, and I've been watching people's comments saying, oh my gosh, I love that you could do this on a collar. Oh <laughs> my gosh, yes. You didn't even know you had this, did you? Now you do. Now I can do coaching <laughs> on your dream. Yes, you can. Oh my gosh, Angela, I have managed to totally attach it to the foot. Okay, hold on. So if this happens to you at home and you have this attached, give me one sec. I have gotten it all attached underneath and I want to get it out. I'm trying to get it out without taking the foot off. So I'm trying to move us forward, but hey, Julian. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just fielding the questions for you. Everybody's loving it. Well, thank you for fielding the questions and, uh, Oh, here's here's somebody. Oh gosh, that's so funny. She made a um a quilt block that turned out ugly. Now I can't imagine an ugly quilt block, but it, I mean, well, maybe <laughs> ugly no more with couching to cover the mistake. Perfect, perfect. Absolutely. And actually, I was couching some, or I was sewing something recently, and I didn't care for um. I'm just gonna take this off really quick. I didn't care for what I had done on the stitching, so I uh, couched over the section. And that was an awesome save for me because, uh, oh my gosh, I couldn't, um, I just didn't care for it. And I thought this is perfect to uh, give me a save. So you can absolutely couch over mistakes. That is a That's true. gonna be a lifesaver. And also Cindy, yes, um, I would say yes. And then I'll ask Heather, uh, she wants to know, should a needle size change to what type of fabric you're couching on? Uh, she's thinking of doing the back of a jean jacket. For that, I would use a number 14 denim jean. Because you have to think the needle is going to go through the fabric. Not Don't think so much about the yarn. So I would personally pick whatever you're going to be sewing on, the fabric. Use that as a base for whatever, um, yes. whatever I, size needle. I totally agree with that, Angela. Absolutely. Um, that is a really good point. Okay. I have almost got this out. All right. Let me put this back. So, <laughs> sorry, everyone. Basically, I had just taken a free motion foot and started sewing with it and the machine just said whoa i'm really confused as to why you're doing that and <laughs> i can't believe you didn't break a needle that would that's that's usually what happens over live <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i have done this days in a row no issues but like i said i was completely enthralled with watching your screen and didn't change mine all right now we got a screen that or now we have something that'll work so let me put the uh the um, thread back in. Hey, Mary, um, I don't know if I do. I, I The Quattro was when I first started working with Brother, which would have been many, many years ago. So if I do have videos for the Quattro, it would be on YouTube. It would probably be on either, it would probably be on my YouTube channel if I do. So you can go to my, but I wouldn't have it listed under machine. So let me check, Mary, and I'll, um, I can let you know next week on the live show, or you can go to my YouTube channel and scroll back to the videos and you can kind of tell by the look of the machine if I was using the Quattro or not. That's a good point. All right, I'm using my dental tool really quick to bring that right. back through. Everybody loves seeing that part. We get to see it again. 
the dental tool has just been a lifesaver. Like I said, brother does give you one and it's awesome. And if you're really good at keeping all your tools together better than me, then you won't have an issue. All right, now I am on the couching foot. And like I mentioned, the feed dogs are automatically lowered. So this is going to be free motion and I'm going to lock my stitches before I start. Now this, the machine will automatically slow you down but I want to just be paying attention to going slow. So all I'm doing is I wanna make sure that my thread, or you might, excuse me, my yarn is caught when I take a turn or go around in a corner. But you can see this is really easy. Um, and I love this look. I mean, it's very easy to push and pull. The thread fits through perfect, or the yarn and the thread go through perfectly. Even though I'm not using the uh, mono poly, I don't think you can see the 100 weight thread. So I'm just gonna keep going and here, let me stop in a sec so you can see. All right. That's gorgeous. Pull that out. So free motion with any of the yarn that you have will work. Now I'm gonna throw this in here, Angela, that a lot of our brother machines also have another foot that looks like this and it has a C on it. And you can use it in place of this foot. So if you're home right now and you're snowed in and you're like, oh my gosh, this would be an awesome attachment, but I'd love to try some free motion right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Double check your your uh, foot, your feet that and your box that all of your feet came in and see if you have that because this would just go on and then I would just thread the yarn directly through this hole. So you can free motion couch with this one as well. So lots of options. Oh, I love that. Hey, Mary, we can see your comments, just so you know. But there's a, a lot of comments coming through. So if I miss one of yours, please don't be offended. And a lot of times I keep your questions till the end. So I see you on YouTube there. So no worries. Um, Vera, Vera has a silly, she has silly questions. There's no silly questions, Vera. What no, do you got? Never, uh, never, never. Feet dog automatically come back up when you choose another stitch. I'm a new Luminaire user. Hey, by the way, Vera, congrats on your new Luminaire. Um, she hasn't tried free motion quilting yet. So yeah, so when you switch to a different stitch, yes, it will change that back. Correct, absolutely, 100%. That is a great question. Thank you for answering that. I love that the feed dogs are automatically lowered, but they will come back up as soon as you're done, as soon as you choose a new stitch. All right, next foot, Angela. So we know we can couch with a J foot. We know we can couch with the free motion kit as well as the C foot that we have that comes with a lot of our machines. But what else can we do? Okay, this is our move it foot. I'm moving the move it foot closer. Oh, you're okay. gonna have some very excited people. They were asking and asking and I didn't answer them because I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, it's here. Okay, so if you have a move it foot, you can buy an attachment that will allow you to couch. So you do not have to have a luminaire to couch with your move it foot. However, and let me show you the special foot. So um, this has a hole right in the middle and I'm going to use my dental floss tool to pull my yarn through again. But this is our special foot with the belt. So the belt never ever leaves the contact with the fabric. And that's what makes this particular walking foot slightly different than the others that are on the market. This one plugs into the back of your machine. So it's, it's, there's a brain connected to this foot as you're using it. So awesome walking foot just for quilting and uh, different things in general, but it has this couching foot. Now, if you have a Luminaire 2 or you have a Luminaire 1 with the kit 1 upgrade, then one of the things you got was the sewing and embroidery couching. And it comes with a thread guide as well. So let me put those on and show you how you can do sewing embroidery and then we're going or excuse me sewing couching and then we're going to do embroidery couching like what you saw in my jacket today so let me come back here and I'm going to pull this up so you can see this is uh, just like any regular foot that you screw onto the side it's very quick now because we had that little um we had our little on camera you know mess up where there where uh you saw that my foot got stuck when I didn't lower my feed dogs. Let me show you. Well, and I think those are really good opportunities so that people are, you know, I mess up as much as anyone. Um, we all do. But what I wanted to show you was a different thing that I had happen. 
earlier. So here it is. You can see, I just showed you this has a tail and I forgot to plug my tail in the other day when I was couching and I was so frustrated and I thought, you know, this is such a great foot and I'm not very happy with my stitches. Let me show you why. Here's an example. Like, look here, see how it's all, um, really close together there and then it spaces out or here, this is even a better example of how it's, um, you can see that it wasn't working well. And I thought, well, gosh, what is, what's going on? I forgot to plug in the tail. So you can see how really important it is that you get it hooked up to the brain and in, then you'll get wonderful results. Okay, let's go to our next piece of fabric and show you how this will work. So just before you start that, just real quick, for those Whoa. that have no clue that they're like, what the heck is this foot? It's different than a walking foot. Yes. And Heather just showed you, you have to plug it in because you can control the, it's a band that's in there and you can control that with a setting in the machine, which is different than a walking foot. So just to be clear, it's not the same. Correct. Thank you. It is different. And it's, well, I have to say, I think it's better because it doesn't, that belt never, ever leaves uh, the surface of your fabric, which is what yes, makes it, it so easy. It and so, all right, I'm going to bring this down and now you can do, you can use this dental tool guide in whatever way makes sense to you. One of the recommended ways is to do it before you even put the foot on. So if it's too hard to, um, you know, sort of get in here and try to be poking it um, through the hole from here, you can do it before the foot even goes on. But just for convenience, now we see that that's through and I'm ready to stitch. So now you can use any decorative stitch on your machine it, as long as um, the machine reads it. So let me just pick a zigzag. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And I'm going to lower my feed dot, or excuse me, lower my foot and start sewing. Now I didn't make any adjustments to the zigzag. I just used it straight as it came in default setting and a white 100 weight thread over the top. So if you're thinking, oh gosh, you know, I can see the, th um, see the thread. So use a, a mono poly and you won't be able to see it. It also is a little wide. So I could have done a slightly less, uh, let me pick a different stitch and, uh, you'll be able to see that I can also, so I'm doing, actually, let me do a feather stitch. So like I said, use threads though, that you can see use a, um, Use a variegated or something fun. Let me, now I'm just using the scissors button to cut the thread and I'm gonna come back over here and you can see so many fun things you can do with this. And one of the things I did was I created kind of a sampler and I'm going to switch the camera angle. So I'm just gonna turn it around so you can get a better view of my sampler. And so here you can see that I just did basic what we're doing right now. These were different thread, different yarns. Um, this was actually a ribbon and I used a variety of stitches. This was my free motion couching with some uh, glitter yarn. This is where I used the variegated thread and the move it foot, just like I just showed you. So I used all kinds of different stitches to, to put that yarn down. And this is the last thing that we haven't talked about. And I think Angela showed you the same, um, the same design. So in the luminaire, I'm going backwards. Let me, there we go. In the luminaire, you get 40 built-in embroidery couching stitches. So it will automatically stitch them out for you. And that's what you see here. So you will get in the luminaire two, or with the Luminaire One upgrade, the ability to do couching with your embroidery foot or couching with your move it foot. In addition to the other stuff we showed you, which you can also do at any time. Now, something fun that else that I've been doing is I have been doing a faux piping with my couching. So this purple border that you see here is yarn. And I wanna come a little bit closer. Oh, so I love that. that. I have decided that I would like to dress up my bindings a little bit. If you remember last time I was on the show, Angela, I showed you how to do pattern connect and I did this bind this runner. Yeah. Well, 
I'm going to show you here this purple um, piping that you see. That's just yarn. So I couched around the entire uh, the entire runner. Let me see if I get closer here. Using just yarn. That's so beautiful. There are other well, things you can do. When you did that, just because there's a few questions rolling up too, but when you did that, did you use uh, the sewing version with the Move It Foot then, or did you do free motion with that one? That's a perfect question. So I actually did this with, let me show you this here. I did it with the Move It Foot instead of the embroidery, and I used, I'm trying to get this right into the camera, I used a uh, blanket stitch so that okay. it would, uh, there was a colored one here, I think. I really love the look. See how it kind of has a striped look? Mm -hmm. I really enjoy using the blanket stitch. So you certainly could have free motion quilted it uh, down, but I did use the Move It Foot with the sewing version. Beautiful, beautiful. So another option there. But let's show you, because it's the only other thing we haven't talked about yet, and that's how to use the embroidery side with your couching. And I'm gonna switch you back this way so you can see. All right. And here's an example of. Oh, we bring... just lost your camera for, for a sec. Okay, coming back. While she's coming back, Lucy, I see your question. Which is better, sewing coaching or embroidery coaching? Well, actually, they're totally different. I mean, you're using totally different things. So embroidery coaching, usually you have to pick a design that you're using that exact design, like the one she just showed you. Uh, sewing coaching, you can create any design you want. So you can kind of just have at it. So while she's changing her foot, I'll keep bringing a few more questions up here. Um, Jill, is the move it foot for any machine? Only if your machine came with it. So I think that would include the Dream Machine, the Stellaire, and the Luminaire. I don't think, did it you, go before that, the Dreamweaver? It did. So you can use it with the 6200, the 5100, the Dreamweaver, the Dream Creator. If you have a VQ3000 or 2400, the, the larger sewing machines that have the 11 and a quarter inch that we call the V series machine, you can use it with that. Sure. That's there a good you question. Know. Very Wendy has a great question. Where do you put your yarn so it doesn't get caught up? So you ah. go first, Heather, and then I'll say where I stick mine. <laughs> okay, that's a good question. And I was just going to say we haven't showed up there, huh? So, mm, okay, should I tilt my camera? I think I can so that you can see the top of my machine. All right, so you can see basically the top. All right, so... What what brother recommends is a couple things. You can put it in the top. So you can lay it in the top of your machine as long as it has enough thread to continue to feed, that is okay. That is all right. You can also put it on the spool stand and let me tilt this up a little bit more. You can thread it from one side to the other and straight down. And then it would go through the, there's a thread guides that we haven't really showed you. So those go off the side of the machine. So those are a couple things. The biggest, biggest thing, of course, is that you have enough thread, or excuse me, enough yarn sitting so that it never, because obviously it can't pull straight off of this. So you would need enough yarn kind of pulled up next to it constantly to feed it. What do you do, Angela? I do exactly the same thing. I have it on the top like that, except okay. about every few minutes, I will stop and yeah. make sure I pull a little bit more out. And I actually usually keep one of my hands, <laughs> this sounds crazy, but while I'm working, I always try to keep one of my hands just feeling that to make, cause you'll know right away if it starts to get tight. Cause if it's yeah. tight, then it doesn't go on correctly or um, it can break a needle, all, all those things. So it's a little bit of like tweaking and work, but once you get used to it, it's fine. But I just stick mine right on top. I leave a little bit of free and then I just stop every few seconds just to, I wouldn't say every few minutes, every few seconds, just to check and see how it's working. Um, one time, just once, uh, because I was working on a huge project, <laughs> I actually put the yarn in my lap <laughs> and oh. then I could just keep feeding it. Well, cause I was doing free motion. So I was feeding it and free motion, like you're eating or something. And then I always knew that it was free. So you can get kind of creative on this too, but that's not a brother recommended way. That was just my way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When brother does recommend putting it up at the top and letting it, making sure that it, you have enough to feed off just like you're talking about Angela. So 100%. 
We haven't talked about the fact that there are thread guides. So you get, when you get the embroidery couching and the sewing couching kit together, if you have a luminaire or you have, um, then you would have gotten both of them. One has an EC on the side of it. Uh, EC, embroidery couching. Okay, they've made this super easy to know what it's for. Since this is embroidery couching, this is the sewing one. And both of them fit onto, you have a slight, you have a hole right up here. And both of them fit the same way into that hole. Oops, I don't think I showed you, so I'm gonna come back this way. So it comes on and off like this, and then slips onto the top. So that is an actual thread guide that will you, that you will be able to bring your yarn off the side and then bring it down and it will feed down the side of your machine. So you get one for the sewing and one for the embroidery. Let me show you what the embroidery foot looks like because out of all of them, I think the embroidery couching is the most intimidating looking. So it looks like this. Kind of looks like a little bit like a dental tool to me. <laughs> I don't, if it's a dental tool, I don't think I want to be in that chair. <laughs> this, is the, this is the couching hole. Now, this is the only thing you're going to use this foot for is embroidery couching with the built-in designs that we'll have Angela show you because she's got her camera there in a second. But first, let me show you the foot. So this is a thread guide. This is where the yarn goes through. So when I, and let me just do it now so that I'm prepared. When I use my um, when I use my threader stuck on the ground, okay, here it is. When I use my threading device and I put my yarn through it like that, just like we have been, then I'm going to put it through here and pull my yarn through. So now the yarn, whoops, is threaded through here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just put this on like I would a regular foot. There isn't, there's that same, actually let me show you, there's that same hole right here that it goes onto the side that you screw on just like you would for pretty much most of your brother feet that you're probably used to. And I would say it's exactly like your move it foot. So let me see if I can get that on. Okay, so now that foot is on. Now, if you can see, let me get a little bit closer. All right, if I put my needle down right now, it will not go into what I want it to go into. There is a slight adjustment that can be made when you first put your feet on. I'm gonna use the screwdriver and there is a, a place I can do, move right here that will, Move my foot to the right or left. I have something going on. Let me turn this. And as I turn it, can you see that the foot is actually moving towards me? Yep, we can see that. And also, that's the best tool in the whole wide world. <laughs> 100% it is the best tool comes with your machine I'm trying to get the thread out of it it's got a few things going on here so as I'm turning it now mine is over a little bit to the side hold on sorry if my hands keep getting in the way here um and pull this out so I can see better. All right, so it comes with a special foot that allows you to do, and actually, Angela, could you show your screen and the different stitches that are built in when you get the luminaire? I sure can. So, oops, I did it again. <laughs> I just want you to see all the beautiful dresses. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna put mine on. First off, when she was talking about, I'm going to go back though, because I had it all set up here to show you guys. For those of you that were looking for, this was the one of the embroidery designs that I did as well. This was all done in embroidery hoop. And when you click on C. Oh, wait, Angela, you're still on me. I am? Oh, oh. I think so. I sure am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see C. 
<laughs> okay, so let me go back. So this is one of the designs similar to what she did. This was with a really furry yarn and this was an embroidered design. So I just sat there and watched it embroider. So let me go back here. I just wanted to show you where to get to that. There you go. These are the designs you want me to show, right? Because yes. I had it all ready and I, I'm hoping I'm <laughs> on the same page, but if not, you're learning a double thing. So here, look at all these designs. So I can bring this up. Bring this down so you can see it right here. Make it bigger. Isn't that cool? I could completely see putting that, a bunch of these down like the front of a jacket or something. I love this one. And here's a few more for you. I have this zoomed out, so. All of these are all embroidery. So you will just put your fabric in the hoop and you are good to go with a little bit of yarn. Absolutely, and it, you know, it actually doesn't take that much yarn. It's really surprising um, that you can, I, I was surprised. I would think, oh gosh, I gotta get out a whole bunch of yarn and um, gonna have to. Oh, I should have done that one for Valentine's Day. I forgot all about that one. Oh yeah, that one's perfect. Okay. All right, so once, yes, once you can see that, then I'm gonna actually I'm just gonna show you and when you finish there are a lot so those come with the upgrade kit one oh. or the luminaire two. Oh my gosh wolf pack check it out <laughs> squirrel oh my gosh i think i'm gonna have to make one of those <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> i have a little squirrel fetish <laughs> you guys talk squirrels a lot I just have them eating out of my hand in the backyard. I think my husband doesn't want me to get a pet, so he's letting me feed the squirrels. So if they end up in the attic, it'll be a whole different thing, but that thing is super cute. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so the, basically what we have here, and I know we're kind of getting close to the end, but is I have the foot attached, you're putting the yarn through it, and I wanna show you, this is actually one of the ones that you were just showing them, if I can back up a little bit then you can see this was one of the ones that were built in. And you can see this is a pretty chunky thread. And it, some of the times we get questions like, how thick can you put this through? Well, brother recommends about a four. And I'm not a really big yarn person, but if you, if you can slide it through without a lot, without it getting hiccups or caught on things, then it's perfectly fine. So this particular thread, let me show you because you can see it's really chunky and it fit through perfectly fine. I didn't have any problem embroidering that. So give it a try. See if you can run it through the foot with the, uh, with the uh, dental threader. And if it goes through something like this that I had mentioned was made out of, uh, was made out of recycled garments. This is too thick. You would know just by putting it through with your dental threader, running it through. But when you hit places like this, it's just going to get locked up. And so you wouldn't be able to do it. However, you can do it with your J foot. So as I mentioned before, when we first started today, you could certainly use your J foot and then that would go easily over really thick threads like that. So you can go back and forth when it comes to couching, whether um, going from very thin to large, you can double up. There are, oh my gosh, there's so many different options. I love these. I love that yarn combination you have on there. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> There are so many different choices, but um, I had a lot of fun even just doing something like, you know, a sampler where you can try out the different techniques, you know, whether it's the embroidery, if you have that, whether it's the move it foot and um, or whether it's just the J foot and you want to try out, you know, different options for and you can see I used a metallic thread if that does show up on the screen so that yeah. you, could, you can go highlight your thread and then also whatever it is you're you're using so here again was the free motion and that's one of my favorites that's just really easy and there wasn't this was just a practice sampler and yeah you know what couching does remind me of those chenille too uh but whether it's your clothing like i did here or you know just decorating i've seen a lot of fun stuff lately Oh my gosh, these were awesome. So much inspiration. And there's a handful of questions if you still have time, Heather. I'm going to bring yeah. a few up if you don't mind. Definitely. All right, so 
Um, can you make the designs bigger? And I just actually have my little squirrel here. Let me just bring you back over here. Let's see it. Let's see. Because when I brought this up, oops, I'm sorry, I already played with it. <laughs> So see, you can make it smaller. It'll click a couple times when that's as small as you can get it or make it larger, it'll click. So the machine will let you know how far you can do that with the designs, if you can make it larger or smaller. And there was also um, a couple questions here about uh, software, which I haven't played with the software, but yes, you can create some of these designs with the software because I've seen Cindy do it, I've seen Reen do it. I don't know if you've done it, Heather. Um, that was another question that popped up here. I've, I've seen people do it and I played around with a little bit, not as good as Cindy and Reen at all. But yes, with some software, you could do that uh, and start making your own designs, which is a whole nother really fun thing for embroidery. Yeah. With the J foot, can you only go straight? Um, you cannot free motion with the J foot. Do you think that's the question that she's asking? I think so. So Connie, are you referring to just like, like she just sewed straight lines? I mean, you could still sew, you know, like if you sewed a curve, you sewed a sleeve in, you can sure. sew in circles. Uh, you just can't free motion where it goes all crazy. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, you can ang turn angles. Absolutely. That would, that makes sense. So for sure, you can do it like you would regularly sew. Hi, Peg. Well, yes, you can watch it again. We're not going to do it again. <laughs> well, as soon as we're not live here, you can go back to the Brother So's Facebook or YouTube page and watch the entire episode again. There was so much information here. You will not want to miss it. And anybody that wants to go back and take notes, things like that, I know we pack in a lot in an hour. That's yes. what's awesome about it. I see somebody asked about, they said they were couching a yarn, a black yarn. Notice that the straight stitch seemed to split the yarn. Uh, I would suggest, I'm not sure if this is what you were doing, just need a wider decorative stitch, you know, wider zigzag, uh, wider, any, any kind of the decorative stitches we showed today. And you would be able to hit either side instead of hitting, I think that's what you mean, instead of hitting the yarn itself. And that should help you yeah. to prevent from splitting it, kind of go over it. And if you're using a straight stitch, they would be splitting the yarn right down the center. So do a zigzag or do one of the decorative stitches that she did, then you're not going to split the yarn. It'll all be consistent. Correct. Correct. Thank Even you. Even if you're just using the J foot. Yes. Um, someone asked about the tool. I can't find who asked it, but I was kind of like rolling through um, uh, the little thingamajig. Uh, <laughs> the little other thingamajig to un. Yes. <laughs> the screwdriver. Yes. The the screwdriver. Screwdriver. Brother, brother screwdriver. So this screwdriver came <laughs> with, um, comes with the machines and it has, originally it was used because it allowed you to get in to the needle plate. So you could turn this sideways and you could open the screws on the needle plate, like on the dream machine. But the still air has, or excuse me, the luminaire has one where you just pop it open and you don't need that. But you can absolutely still buy the brother screwdriver. And it's just such an easy convenient. It also lets you tighten and loosen uh, hoops. So that's what the hole in, on, is on the other end. So, very nice. And yes, very convenient. Absolutely. Um, Lauren wants to know, to know if you are those, those are all the embroidered designs on your jacket. Yes. Yes. Yep. These two are the ones that I repeated over and over. And these were both from the, the 40 built in. Yep. And let's see, I saw a few more things on here. Can you use a regular embroidery foot? Um, hmm. So it wouldn't be recommended because the hole is so much smaller. It's intended to guide the yarn. I have to be honest. Yeah. I can't say that I've tried that, but the, the one, the couching embroidery foot has a thread guide that brings it straight into that smaller hole. And just like I mentioned, there were some alternate feet that you could use for couching that may have come with your machine. Notice how that hole is so much smaller than an open toe free motion foot, because we're trying to keep the yarn directly over the place where the needle's coming down with the thread which is important. And if you if you don't know why, once you do it and all of a sudden you go around a curve and, and the thread didn't capture it, you'll know why. Yes, the, the yarn will be unattached. Um, just checking. Yeah. I saw a few. Uh, can you purchase that? If you go to your bro local brother dealer, are, do they still, I think you can buy those separate. Uh, buy which one? The screwdriver. 
Oh gosh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, just call your brother yeah. dealer. And you can also buy a lot of these attachments that we're showing if it will work on your machine. So check that too. Correct, correct. You're welcome, Sharon. Yes, thank you. I really appreciate everyone sticking with us today. Hey, we switched out all kinds of feet. You're gonna have different things happen when that occurs, but it's been fun and I want you to definitely know Bring out that yarn, try it out on different stuff. It's such a, a great sh uh, snow day, right, for trying something like that out. Yes, and I also love the fact that the very beginning when you showed the J-foot, because I have a whole stack of yarn that won't fit through that little uh, attachment and won't fit through the hole because it's just a big nubby yarn, and I'm looking right. forward to trying that. Absolutely. There's so many fun yarns out there today when there's no limits to using any of them depending on the foot you use. So, yes, yes, Lauren. Wait, let's see, not that one. I think it was uh, right before that. Diana, yes, there are attachments. Just call your brother dealer, tell him what machine you have, and there are different attachments that you can get for your machines. Absolutely, and that's what we wanted you to know, that you were not limited. I mean, I feel like there were so many different feet that we were trying to throw up, whether you know, it was the J foot, whether it was the, oh, here, so this was the free motion foot so if you have a v-series machine if you have a dream weaver or dream creator if you have a dream um those kind of machines you can still put this free motion attachment on so you just need to like she said like angel said just call your dealer tell them what machine you have but no problem also you can also do the no this isn't free motion but you can absolutely just use your regular j foot and catch those big fun threads so also, don't forget your move at foot, and that has your couching, the hole you can see here. This is the special foot that is for the, um, come over here, for the yarn to go through. So we've, we're t we've been going from the move at foot to the J foot to the uh, <laughs> motion foot on the couching. Uh, boy, and then also to the embroidery one, which is still attached. Look in your box of feet that, that came with it and see what you have. Yes. So I didn't notice this. You must have you must have good eyes, Joyce. Did you have your yarn wrapped around something special? My yarn wrapped around something besides the thread guides or Oh, oh I wonder. Oh, is that what you're oh, looking at, Joyce? Do you mean um Yes. Okay, I think I know what she means. The little blue thread, is that what she's referring to? Um I wrapped know. it around. Okay, hold on, it's here. So what I did, let me show you just on this. So I had all of this um, sampler kind of threads where they weren't an entire spool. And you know how you know, they get all tangled up. So what I did was I took batting, and since I don't have it in front of me, I'm just gonna show you what I did. I took batting and I rolled it, and then I took my yarn or my different pieces, and I just oh. did the I think that might be what she was referring to. This is obviously I, all messy, but that's what I did to store them temporarily. And it's worked really well. They don't get all tangled up. That is uh, definitely what it was. I saw that too, but I guess I didn't think anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just batting. <laughs> oh, so when you come to the end of your couching design, what do you do at the end of the yarn to finish the ends? Well, there's a okay. couple things you can do. Yes. You want to say, I'll show you what I do too. You go ahead. Okay. All right, let's see. So what I do is I have a large needle. I'm trying to see, this is a tapestry needle. It's huge, right? It doesn't have that super pointy end, but what I do is I take, so let's just say, cause I don't have one that's finished right now, but let's just say this is the end that's sticking out of the fabric. So I thread that through. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, you know what? Because I'm not using my dental tool. Your dental floss. <laughs> my de <laughs> I know that has a name, um, whatever, whatever it is. I'm just going to go to this really quick. So pretty much that you need to, they come in a box. I mean, you get a ton of them. So it's okay if they fall on the carpet or you lose them. Because really, and here's another example of me using it. I'm just going to push, pull it through the tapestry needle. And this would have been, so say this is attached to my embroidery. So then I take it and I uh, take it back through my fabric. Say it's all done. And I take it through the other side. And now the loose side is on this side. And I do that with both ends and I tie them in a knot and trim them. And they'll be on the wrong side or on the wrong side and the right side looks nice. Is that what you do, Angela? Yep, that's exactly what I do. Okay. Or if on some of the cases where you had all the straight lines uh, that are going to be sewn into a seam, then I don't worry about it. But if it's going yeah. to be something that's in the middle, like an embroidered one or something like that, I pull them to the backside. 
Yep. Absolutely. Pull them to the backside. That's the, and this tapestry needle, wonderful. Anything that has just a giant end and a semi pointed edge, it doesn't have to be super sharp and you can just push it right through. Oh, Cindy, you just made my day. She, she oh. made both of our days. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Cindy. Oh, that was so sweet that you're here. Thank you. Oh gosh, everybody's thank telling you. us it's floss threaders. Thank you. I just well, and and uh, I have to tell you, I think it was Lucy when you said that one thing looked like a dental something in a dental chair. She said the same thing. I am not getting in that chair. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, isn't it true that sometimes we get a little intimidated by you know we have all of these funky things that come <laughs> off and out of their element when they're not on the machine and you're looking at them, it's like oh that's a little scary. But no, they're not. They're they're perfect tools and they're wonderful. Great oh, to see you here, Veronica. Veronica. I'm glad that we could you. bring a smile on your face. Yes, there's Lucy. No, ch no dental chairs, Lucy. <laughs> Great to see you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This was awesome. Heather, this was great. I I think everyone is going to be going back to rewatch this. Don't forget, you can replay, take notes. Brother, thank you for letting us take over your page every Tuesday and Thursday. It's the highlight of my week, I know. Absolutely. And Heather, I can't wait to see what you bring back. Are you working on any other projects right now that we need to know about that we might see soon? Um, that's a good question. So I have been doing a lot of scan and cut quilting. So totally different topic, but oh. quilt, cutting quilt blocks with my scan and cut. So uh, yeah, some new stuff there too. Okay, so uh, I have a feeling, can we ask you when you come back, hopefully we get to see something like that. That would be amazing. Yes, I would be, I would love to share. Definitely. We'll just be too long, Angela. These shows could go on all day, right? <laughs> they could. We might have to have another marathon. <laughs> well, Heather, thank you. Brother Sewing and Crafting family, thank you for being here with us. We had so much fun and we'd like to see what you're working on. So if you share your photos on social media, be sure to use hashtag Brother Sews because we love to see it. And on Instagram, a lot of times they'll share them. So make sure you put a little note there for them, what you're working on. And, um, Again, we'll be at your side virtually next Tuesday at noon. So perfect. I think actually next Tuesday's at two. Uh, there's one, one that has to be at two. So just always check the calendar if you go to Brother Facebook page. And I also started adding a calendar, just so you know, on my webpage, AngelaWolf.com. There's a whole calendar of the events. You'll know who's coming. You can look ahead and see when Heather's going to be there next or any of your favorites. Or if you like them all, you'll just know to mark your calendar. <laughs> exactly. So Heather, thank you so much. Thank you, Angela. It's been wonderful to be on today. I really appreciate everyone coming and I've really enjoyed your questions and comments. It's lovely to hear from you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks everyone. See you See next you time.